who you are and this content might come across a bit self-righteous. I'm going to give you five examples of how you can be a terrible father and utterly let your son down. I'm confused. I thought your channel was all about supporting dads to try and be better dads, not worse dads. It is. But what I've learned is actually human beings, myself included, are much more interested in the negative side of humanity. And actually, if you want to get someone to watch something, you're more likely to if you say, here are some examples of how I'm being rubbish, as opposed to, here are some examples of how I'm being awesome. What happened to your eye? I got beaten up by a teenager at jiu-jitsu. I don't want to talk about it. I bet he does. So if, like me, you've got a son who wants to be better at football, here are some ways to make sure you massively let him down. Tip number one. When he tells you that he'd like to start running around the block every evening before he goes to bed, tell him that you don't really like that idea because he's nine and he's too young. Instead of offering to go with him, which will actually do you some good as well, so that you can't possibly go for a run now, you've just eaten your body weight in curry food, and your wife has broken the habit of a lifetime, and opened a second bottle of wine. Is that why you've broken the habit of a lifetime and put sugar in your coffee? Yes, it is. And the second way to totally let your son down, basically look for lots of ways not to take him to football training on a Saturday morning. Make up fictitious problems with the car that mean it's probably not great to drive this morning. Lie and say that the guy who organises the football has just texted you to say that she's too windy. Tell him a massive whopper that the best way to get better at football is to go to the park with your dad for 20 minutes and cook the ball against a wall. That's not true. I know it's not true. But he doesn't, he's nine. Ah, oh, coffee flavoured guilt. Delicious. And another tip of how to be a terrible father and not support your son. Don't go for that run with him around the block because you can't find your shoes or you're feeling a bit tired. Or you've just finished off your wife's chicken tikka masala. Or having another glass of wine and watching memes on YouTube is more important than supporting your son. Are you worried this content might come across a bit self-righteous? Yeah, I am a bit. But as I saw from the comments I got from the last video where basically... I was trying to tell people what not to do. Yeah, they weren't very nice, were they? No, but in a way, it probably shows me that I'm on the right path. As a bit of an aside, if you're on YouTube or any social media or anyone with a message, the one way to know you're on the right path is that you get more interaction, quite often negative interaction. If people like something, they don't tell you. They just like something. If people don't like something, they tell you. So I'm going to stick with this because I'll be honest, I'd be much more likely to click on a video that said, Five ways to be crap at something, as opposed to five ways to be awesome. And you're quite often rubbish at things, aren't you? Yeah, thanks. So another way to let your son down, even though you promised him if, if he was brave enough to get up and do something he didn't want to do on a Saturday morning and go to football training, that you'd buy him a sausage roll from Greg's on the way home, lie and say you left your wallet at home, even though you didn't. Or lie and say that you can't afford that £1.30 for a sausage roll. Didn't you just spend £3.30 on a coffee? Yes. That's a bit double standards. I think you're getting it now. And another way to be a terror father and let your son down, justify your crapness to yourself. When you get those pangs of guilt when you see your son kicking the ball against the wall on his own in the garden, just remind yourself, well, you couldn't go this week. You had a lot on. You're stressed. You're busy. A nine-year-old won't understand the financial pressure of the cost of living crisis. Try and push down those memories of the times you actually took your son for a run around the block and actually felt better yourself. Push down those memories of the times you've taken your son to football and you felt generally proud and heartwarmed to see him run around with kids his own age, having a great time, being involved, getting fitter, learning vital social skills and feeling part of the team. Push those away when you start to feel a bit guilty. What's ultimately your hope for the direction of this channel? Wow, that's a deep question from a one-year-old golden retriever. I really generally hope that I can entertain and indirectly help and support other dads by showing them the things that I get wrong. Like anything, I need feedback. Not sure those comments you got from the last video were really feedback. No, more sort of abuse. But it's all feedback. It might just be feedback you'd rather not get. If you're a dad out there and you're amused or entertained or supported by some of my content, and you've got an idea for a video I could do, please let me know in the comments. It would really help me out. And also, under the guise of feedback, if there's stuff you really don't like, or stuff that really annoys you, or stuff that really brings up a feeling of something in you, please let me know what it is. As a 48-year-old man, what are the best memories you have of the times you spent with your father who died five years ago? Wow, you're on it today with the deep questions. This actually works quite well and is a good way to finish this video.
When I think about my happiest memories of time spent with my dad, it was when he was watching me play rugby. Even though I'd get cross when he tried to give me a hug, I'd tell him off for congratulating me when I did something well on the pitch. I was secretly stoked to know he was there. And quite often when I was on the pitch, feeling nervous or worried or self-conscious, looking over and see his familiar face on the sidelines really helped. And the fact that 40 years on, those are the core positive memories I have of my dad. Kind of highlight that really what I should be doing at the moment is doing all I can to support my son. By running around the block. By running around the block. By watching him play football on a Saturday. By watching him play football on a Saturday. By maybe spending less time videoing in a car when you should be watching him play football. I get your point. 